you watch old war movies or something like the the guys coming out of the trenches in World War One and the like just attacking, that's what the moose looks like it's doing. Like the moose is going back on the offensive. No, I think it's really important that you know when the world is going to crap around you that you don't have dandruff. You want to be dandruff free. Welcome to the USA. Woo! And welcome to Michigan. Takam Takwamenon. Takwamenon. Okay. That's the floor of the Takwamenon. 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 Yes. Our short time in Quebec was over and we were headed out on a five-day, 1,500-mile trek to visit friends in Minnesota. The first leg of our journey was from Quebec City to Kinburn, Ontario, which proved to be a very long drive. Long drives equal boredom, which equals finding ways to entertain yourselves, like rambling about the wonders of animal signs along the highway. So you were saying yeah. about the deer and the moose signs, the difference between Quebec yeah. and Ottawa? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm pretty Ontario. sure that like across the U.S., all the... the the deer sign signs are the same, and well, when you see a moose, it's just like a moose. But in Quebec, the the moose is very large, and very just he's just standing with maybe just a, a slight Majestic. walk. Yeah, and the deer almost like if you were to superimpose the deer over I don't know like a little piece of grass, it's just he's just laying there, all like I'm mean, a deer, right? And then you cross into Ontario. And the signs, the deer are very, very active. They're like, they are jumping. Actively jumping away from the moose. <laughs> yes, and then the moose is always right behind them. Uh, and But the moose is like hunched over. Like he's gonna ram the deer's butt. <laughs> it looks like to me, if you watch old war movies or something like that, the guys coming out of the trenches in World War One and them like just attacking, that's what the moose looks like it's doing. Like the moose is going back on the offensive. You know, it looks like it's coming back to take back uh, the land that it's lost. It's just a very aggressive moose in Ontario. We arrived at our RV park in Kinburn, Ontario, and we're still full of energy, so we decided to explore the area. As luck would have it, there just happened to be an awesome Cold War museum nearby. Um, we just did a quick search, and Susanna found the... Dyfin Bunker the Museum. The Dyfin Bunker Museum, yeah. So it's an old, it's, it's an old Cold War muse uh, bunker, they built back in, I think, 1961. It's 100,000 square feet on four levels underground, and it's where the, the Canadian uh, government was supposed to go if, in the case of a, of a nuclear war. So it's one of those things. You're just driving on the road. We, we got a campground just for one night, again, because we, we have three days, four days of long driving, and just to see what's nearby and one of these oddities. So it so, closes in an hour and 10 minutes. And yeah, we're gonna have an hour to go through it. The Dyfin Bunker is located in Carp, Ontario, which is outside of Ottawa. The bunker was operational until 1994 and then was turned into a museum in 1997. The museum is a great place to learn about the Cold War and to see the lengths that countries went to in order to ensure a continuity of government in the event of a nuclear war. It's open seven days a week and the entry fees are $17.50 for adults and $11 for children. Walking into the bunker is like taking a trip back in time. It's really important that, you know, when the world is going to crap around you that you don't have dandruff. Oh, 
look at that, Corbin. This is, the this is called a slide projector. So you would write something on here and a bulb down below would push the light through this and it would put it up on the, on the wall somewhere else. That's how we learned. These were supercomputers back in the day. This kind of looks like the Whopper from War Games. This is medical. This is where mommy would have worked. Yeah, this is patient decontaminated or where you decon. So they step through one side dirty and they wash off and they come through this section and they they'd be clean. We completed our very abbreviated tour in about 45 minutes, but you could easily spend hours. This is one museum that we highly recommend. And speaking of recommendations, have you ever had poutine? Many people told us we needed to try it while in Canada, so we left the bunker and headed to a local restaurant to try the legendary Canadian dish of french fries, cheese curds, and brown gravy. It was delicious, but it's also one of those things you can't eat every day. We're pretty sure our cholesterol shot up 100 points, but it was totally worth it. We hit the road early on our second day and headed to Sudbury, Ontario for another one night stay. It was another long drive and we decided to skip the sightseeing and just rest. On the third day we were up early and got ready to hit the road back to the USA. Where are we going today bud? Good job. <laughs> That's not cool. Where are we going? America. <laughs> it was a short drive to the border, which is accessed by a long bridge spanning the St. Marie's River. Finding the bridge was easy. Finding the entrance proved difficult. Uh, it's too late. It's up there. Was it? We finally got it right on the third try, and we headed across the bridge to the border. It's Hint and Hint's time again, and this time we're giving you seven tips for crossing the U.S. border. Hello. You all know. In Maine? to Detroit Lakes, Minnesota for a while and then across the Yellowstone. Thank you. Welcome to the USA. Woo! And welcome to Michigan. We were staying in the town of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, which sits on the St. Marie's River. We wanted to see some local sites and take a cruise through the Sioux Locks, so we headed to our RV park and then set off for our boat tour. We took a two hour tour from the Sioux Locks Boat Tours. The price is $32 for adults and $11 for children. The tour includes passing through two locks and being raised up 21 feet to the level of Lake Superior. The rest of the tour takes you around the area where you get to see freighters passing by, massive piles of iron ore and taconite used in the steel industry, and of course, beautiful waterways. The tour marked the end of the day for us, and the next day we drove off on a day four of our trip, which included a slight detour. Good morning from Michigan. We're in the Upper Peninsula. We're Youpers for a couple days. Uh, we just left Sioux Locks, or Sault Ste. Marie, and now we're on our way to Wakefield, Michigan for another overnighter, 
and then into Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. So here's our issue. A buddy of mine told me about this, these awesome waterfalls nearby, but it's gonna take us like an hour, at an hour to the day. What's the name of the waterfall? Plus whatever we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we're walking there. Take on. What do you do? What do we do? But this trip is also not just supposed to be where we're supposed to be doing some stops, right? Yeah. My mind, my brain says just go. My heart says turn off. Go see the waterfalls. I, I think we're going. The change of plans added 40 miles and an hour to our drive. The route took us up to and along Lake Superior on our way to the Tacomenon Falls State Park. The park offered us a great chance to get out and stretch our legs as we walked out to see some pretty amazing waterfalls. Takwamenon? Takwamenon. Okay. That's the floor of the Takwamenon. Takwamenon. Yes, Takwamenon. So at Takwamenon Falls, there's there's a lower and an upper falls in the direction that we came in from. Uh, the lower falls just happened to be first. It's uh, it's nine dollars for a car per car. That gets you into both sites. You if could, you're a non-resident. If you're a non-resident of Michigan, Michigan. yeah. Uh, if you pay $33, That'll be your, what is it, a passport to all the state parks in Michigan? That are part of the DNR. Whatever that is. Right. But anyway, yeah, so a good boardwalk that comes, it goes about a third of a mile into the lower falls, and then you have a four mile hike up to the other. We didn't do that one, because um, we were limited on time, so we're gonna drive up to the other falls. We ended our day with a drive to our RV park in Wayfield, Michigan. And the next day, we finished our 1500 mile journey by pulling into our friend's place in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota for a much needed stop. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.